want to do a deep dive into how the request and response object work and just kind of an overview of, of how to use use fetch in a managed state way where you're handling your own custom state and then i want to touch on why you do not want to destructure response like this and i think that's it if there's anything else i'll try to touch on it so first thing we're going to do is just console log request and response and see what happens so if we take a look at this closely we have loading error data we have all these ones that are not grayed out and then we have these that are grayed out down here now i don't want you to focus too much on these getters the only thing that you need to know is basically they work the same as use ref whenever you use ref you have you say value equals use ref and whenever you need to access the value you use value dot current and it's very similar to that so that you can have the values persist across renders these right here get through mutate these are all http request methods that you can use query and mutate are specific for graphql and a cache is just how we manage the cache you can take a look at another video for that i'm not going to go to that in this video and then response we have the same thing we had to make a custom response object for this for the exact same reasons that we have for loading error and data down here and that is because we will get stale values for these if we don't have them as getters which is the main reason why you don't want to destructure this and you want to use it as response.ok versus destructuring it as ok and also I want to go and I want to show you why not to destructure these all right, so let's go over what's going on here. So we have our use fetch set up and we're gonna call use effect. And what this means is it's going to run on component div mount. We're loading the initial to do's. So what's going on in here? We're grabbing our initial to do's from this. And then if the response is okay, remember the response is coming from here. If response is okay, then we're gonna set the initial to do's. And what, what I'm doing here is and notice that I have this this okay where I'm destructuring response and I say bad do not do this this is the same as if you were to try to destructure it up here as well so don't do that here we have if we destructure it we have okay and then here we have response dot okay same thing with data we have response dot data and data remember data is coming from here so I just want to show you why when you're inside of a callback function like this you want to stick with these the response.ok and response.data and how you will get stale values when you're outside of the base layer of your component base layer being where these hooks are set when you're in a callback function you want to use response.ok and response.data not ok or data but let's just save this and run it so loading false this is the initial render where react is rendering the component then we call load initial to do's and we set loading to true when this happens right here loading turns to true it re-renders then when this is completed loading up here is set to false right here so now now we have these to do's at this point where loading is set to false now, let's look here and if we destructure response, OK is undefined. But if we say response.ok, it's true. Now, the reason that it is is because if we destructure OK out of the response at this point in time, OK is undefined. Then we run this and now we have a response. But because we de destructured it before, the OK is going to be undefined. Whereas if we do response out okay, it's defined. And similar with data. So we call response.data and we have our values now. But if we were to set data down here instead of to do's, you can see that we actually are getting the correct data. We just do not want to use this, this data right here 
inside of any callback handlers or functions that we're creating. And you can see that is the case here because response.data is this and data is an empty array. And that's because we're setting our default for data right there. And then on this loading false again, this is just where we're calling set to do's and setting it. So that's just why we have these loading false. All right, so we kind of have an idea of how that works. Now let's go ahead and talk about when we are going to add something. So let's say we have some cool to do and we click add. So notice the spinning loading is true. But let's take a look at the function. So what's going on here? So we wanna make sure that we're not going to execute any of this if we don't have an actual to do right here. So we're not gonna run this, there's nothing in there. All right, then just for, so that we can show why we do not destructure response, we create a new to do, we get that back. And then if the response is okay, then we are going to set our title so that it clears our title. And then we're gonna add our new to do to the front of the list, which is just what happened. Loading is false. And now here's something that's interesting. Now let's take a look at what's going on right here and how okay and response that okay are different. Well, here it seems like they are okay. It seems like it's working properly. However, this right here is actually a stale value because this okay is referring to the okay that was on our initial page load. And we can see this by if we initially abort. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna call load initial to do's and because it's asynchronous, before this finishes, we're going to abort it. We won't see any initial data on the page, but when we add a new to-do, you will notice that this is not a correct value. So we didn't get our initial to-do, as you can see. And so if we say cool and we add it, so we have loading true, It and, and then loading false and then you can see our okay is undefined and that's undefined because we never finished the first request so okay is not a correct value even though it appeared to be previously so you need to make sure that you're using response.okay and not destructuring okay let's talk a little bit more closely about how the data field works so essentially what's going on right here currently is first it attempts to dot JSON the response. And then if that fails, it attempts to dot text the response. If both of those fail, it will not give you any correct data. In the future, what will happen is we will be able to globally, by default, what we're going to do is we're going to have response type So these are all the response body interface methods that turn our response data into JSON tags, form data, et cetera. And what we're also going to have is response type guessing, which will be set to true by default. And what this does is this will attempt to guess what the response type is by checking the content type headers in the response. If there's no content type, there or if, the, if it's having trouble guessing then it's going to go in this order and attempt to grab the data from the response this can also be set explicitly to just json and that way if you know for sure that your response type is json then it's just going to do json this feature is not yet implemented so just stay tuned now let's take a look at a common dependency issue so See how it says react hook use effect has a missing dependency load initial to do's. So let's, let's fix that. How we can fix that is putting use callback here and wrapping our function. That's it. That's all that use callback does. Now that we have this, we can then go ahead and put load initial to do's 
and our use effect. But now you see it says React Hook user callback has missing dependencies. Request and response are okay. So let's fix that. So the reason why we want to do response and not response that okay is because that will cause this to rerun. Notice that we have everything fixed down here. Let's take a look at why we do not want to use response dot okay down here. So notice that our load initials do's was called twice, once and twice. We don't want this. It causes additional re-renders. So we can solve that by just doing this. And now you can see it's only called once. That's it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, post in the comments below. Thanks.